So these are the Sony LinkBuds S and the S stands for silent and I only know this because I asked Sony and a shout out to Rosa from Sony if you're watching. So instead of me just repeating what all the other reviewers have already said, what I thought I'd do is just talk you through what I like about the Sony LinkBuds S, how they stack up against the other Sony earbuds out right now. And at the end of the video, I'll share with you guys some of my custom EQs for various genres. So stick around to the end for that if you wanna test them out. So you ready? Let's go. So I think Sony's approach to the LinkBuds S was to take an already winning design from the XM4s and improve on it in a couple of specific ways to kind of achieve a hybrid between the open back link buds and the top tier XM4s. Now some people complained that the WF-1000 XM4s were a little bit too heavy and could cause wearing fatigue over longer periods of time. So with the new link buds S, Sony have kept the same shape but made them 33% lighter and smoothed out all of the sharper edges too. Some might say this white version resembles a marshmallow. And from my experience, having properly worn them in, I can say that I really appreciate that marshmallow light and pillow soft, comfy quality that they bring to the table. One thing that Sony have sacrificed though is the Qi wireless charging coil that was in the XM4. They've stripped that out in order to keep the weight of the case down. So let me know how you feel about that. I personally haven't missed it that much. Now, some people complained that the WF-1000 XM4s were quite bulky, quite large, and that combined with the weight, even though they were IPX4 rated, meant that they weren't suitable for the gym. So I'm assuming Sony heard this, and as a result have made the link buds around 40% smaller. They also ditched the bullet shell casing gold bling and replaced it with a flush to the body metallic mesh. And some complained that the voice call quality on the XM4s wasn't one of its strengths. So Sony have factored this into the streamlined redesign. And now on the LinkBuds S, the mics have been strategically placed to reduce wind noise. And the Sony LinkBuds S does use AI voice recognition with a database of over 500 million voice samples in order to improve voice call quality and pickup. And about 1 million of those voice samples is me trying to remember the name of this grip. It's the VP T VP1 GP VP 1 2 BT It's the GP VP T2 BT Anyway, I'll let you guys be the judge of how much the voice mic has improved in this extreme mic comparison test. All right, this is the mic test on the WF-1000 XM4. I've got coffee shop background noise literally here about 30 centimeters away from my face. I have a fan, I'm gonna blast this full speed at my face and I've also got my windows open as well. We'll do an extreme test here. All right, so this is the extreme mic test. Let me know how the XM4s are handling the voice call quality. We're now gonna do the same test on the original Link Buds and on the Link Buds S. So these are the original Link Buds and it just occurred to me when I opened the case, there's one thing that I didn't mention which the Link Buds S and the Link Buds share that the XM4s does not have and that's this eco-friendly material. So they've used stone, Japanese and American car parts in order to manufacture this material you see on the case and on the earbuds. Anyway, this is the voice quality on the link buzz. Let's introduce the wind noise. So this is full wind noise coming straight at me with the link buzz, the standard edition, coffee shop noise, road noise from outside, windows, and uh, yeah, full on wind. Let me know how this compares. And now let's do the final test, the link buzz S. All right, so this is the voice call quality on the link buzz S with the coffee shop noise and the road noise right now. And now we're gonna add the extreme wind and see how much better these are than the other two or worse. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, this is full wind coming at me now. How is it sounding compared to the other two? Is it significantly better? Let me know in the comments and let's crack on with the video. So Link Buds, that's an interesting name, isn't it? And Sony have put some thought into this because the idea and the concept behind the name is that it's a pair of earbuds that you can always have on and actually interact with the real world and your digital world on your phone or device without ever having to take them off. Now, in the past, earbuds have used exterior mics to pass audio back through so that you can hear what's going on around you. But do you know what works better than that? A whole 
right through the middle of the earbud. And that is what made the original Link Buds unique. And when it comes to achieving that audio pass through, honestly, they are unmatched. But the problem with the original Link Buds, for me personally anyway, was the fit wasn't that secure and the sound quality due to the open back nature of the design caused it to suffer when it came to sound quality and overall volume. And the battery life was okay at five and a half hours playback, but that's not world beating for a pair of earbuds that doesn't have ANC. So it seems to me as though Sony have thought about how they could achieve the same goals as the original Link Buds, but maybe do it a bit better. Well, that's what they've done here with the Link Buds S. The weight of the Link Buds S are just 0.7 grams heavier per earbud, and the battery life is improved and there's a new adaptive sound mode that's been added in an attempt to still offer that link between the two worlds on your phone and in the real world. So instead of having a hole through the earbuds, they will adapt automatically and systematically on the fly to different kinds of scenario, whether you're walking or you're running or jamming. Now I personally like what Sony have done here with the Link Buzz S. I can't say it's as massively different or unique as the original Link Buzz, but I do believe if sound quality and a secure fit are priorities for you, these hold the good middle ground between the Link Buzz and the WF-1000XM4. And it's worth noting the frequency response on the Link Buzz S is double that seen on the original Link Buzz. So the original Link Buzz had 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The Link Buzz S can go 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz, which is the same as the XM4s, and they do support LDAC. Ah! Which might also be Klingon swear word, and I do like the sound quality here on the Link Buzz S. I would say they're very close to the XM4s, although the XM4s just kind of edge them out a little bit, and that could be due to the one millimeter difference in size of the drivers. The XM4s have a slightly larger driver, and sometimes it's the little things that make the biggest difference. And I will say the ANC has impressed me as well. I would dare to say they are as good as the XM4s, and this could be because they use a similar six mic ANC array, and they use the same V1 chip for the noise canceling. But one thing that I noticed between the two is it does seem like the tips that are shipped with the XM4s offer more passive ANC than the rippled silicon tips on the Link Buds S. And right now, I do hold these in high regards, not just because of their physical and technical attributes, but also because of Sony's headphone software. I would say if you're an Apple iPhone user and you don't want to go with AirPods, I think the Link Buds S are a perfect alternative. Not only do they offer more customization than the Apple AirPods, you can also make them sound even better with EQ adjustments and various tweaks within the app. So thank you for sticking around to the end. You are truly a legendary person. Here are my custom EQs for you to test out. Take them, improve on them. They are yours. Okay, EQ number one. So I tuned this one for rock, heavy metal, grunge, indie, that kind of sound. And although this might sound crazy, start by turning the clear bass all the way up to 10. Then on the 400 band is plus one. The 1K band is plus two. The 2.5K band is plus 10 and the 6.3 band is plus eight and finally on the 16k band plus three so what i was going for here was a focus on vocals without too much sharpness in the high pitch sounds and power in the deep bass so that you can hear the drums but without making the mids too muddy okay here's eq number two in this one i was going for pop hip-hop edm styles of music the focus here is more on the mids and the bass whilst keeping details clear but not too sharp so here's what I went with, plus eight on the clear bass, plus eight on the 400 band, plus one on the 1K band, and plus four on the 2.5, and plus one on the 16.3, and minus one on the 16K band. That just takes some of the sharpness off. Test it out, let me know what you think. Okay, EQ number three, and this is probably my favorite one, is tuned for tracks where you wanna hear the details and the instruments and the vocals very clearly. It's perfect for live music and live performances. So here we go. Clear bass, we're going plus two. 400 band, we're going plus one. 1K band, we're going plus three. The 2.5K band, we're going plus seven. And the 6.3 band, we're going plus five. And finally, the 16K band, we're going plus seven. You're gonna hear all of the nuances in the music with this EQ. Test them out, let me know what you think. I appreciate you guys for watching this far into the video. And if you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I will see you in the next one, so don't be late.